Welcome to your musical home. I'm Emily Wright, founder and executive director of Tamarack Arts. Over the last 25 years, I've seen thousands of students, and based on that experience, I'm here to talk about incremental changes that ambitious string players can make to sound and feel better on the instrument. So last time we were talking about warm-up, today we're going to pivot and get into some super nerdy stuff that could help your shifts feel more secure. Uh, before I start, you should know that this is a practice technique to help you develop an accurate map of the fingerboard. This is not one of those how to have clean shifts videos, although I might do one later. Um, I mean, half of those though are just like dudes pulling on the bow pressure during the shift, and that's not a clean shift. That is two notes with a break in between, but I digress. I have opinions. Um, this is a practice technique that gives you so much information about where you are and where you're going that it tends to kind of take the teeth out of shifts that feel unsteady. Uh, to be clear, any shift that you do not feel like you are absolutely drilling is to some degree unsteady. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is knowing where your first finger is. Know where it is on the first note and then also on the destination note. So today we're going to use the shift from the opening of the swan which has a start on the F sharp on three and end up on B on one. So at least we know where the first finger is going to end up, but where does it begin? So depending on your comfort level with the positions, we might have to count down half steps to figure out what note is under what finger, but that's no problem. Uh, you know, the more you repeat this process, the easier it gets, and we all have to start somewhere. So the important part is that you're on the road. So let's count down from that F sharp. Well, three is F sharp, two is F natural, one is E. Okay, so we're going from E on one to B on one. Okay, so the thing I want you to get a sense of is the movement that underpins and measures a shift most of the time is the distance from where your first finger starts to where it ends up. So now that you know this, let's go ahead and practice that kind of underpinning infrastructure a bit and checking for your very best technique as you go. So we're gonna tune. Are those techniques? Well, the main ones are a soft thumb on the back of the neck. The arm is the main driver of movement as opposed to like your fingers towing the arm around. And then a feeling of release as you shift. It's not a complete list, but it's a super good start. So once you are hitting the shift accurately in this sort of proto form, then you can add the notes that are written but remain focused on your first finger as the arbiter of where your hands are in space. So I'm going to go from three to one, but I'm going to feel where that one is. Now, if you aren't relaxed during this, you will learn the new skill with tension as one of the fundamental components of it. So it is better to miss the shift and be relaxed than to develop a feeling of freak out that actually doesn't help you shift at all. And then plus we can hear the freak out, so it's just not good for anybody. So repeat this mantra. If you nail it relaxed, great. If you miss it relaxed, great. If you're missing it, it just means you need more time and better quality practice on that skill. And that is the very nature of being an improving student. So that is the first step. And I will be back soon with the next step using old finger shifts as a mapping tool. See you next time.